What's up guys, SHOT Show 2022. Here we are with Russell in the Artisan Cutlery booth. Now he's gonna show us some cool stuff. Let's talk knives. All right guys, we are here with Russell at the Artisan Cutlery booth. How's it going, man? It's good, what's up, man? It's good to see you, man. It's been a while, it's been a while. Yeah, it's, it's good. So, okay, you've got some really cool stuff that you guys are showing off here. I'm just gonna let you take over. Cool, all right, so let's start with a couple models we brought from Blade West. We've okay. done a little bit of tinkering with some things, did a little couple modifications. We should have some of these models out soon, but since a lot of people didn't get to see the stuff that went to Blade West, we figured, hey, let's bring it a shot. Absolutely. So, let's start off with one of the ones we've been working really hard on. This is, that's the Valor, designed by Farron Forge. If you can't tell by that very distinctive profile, this is a beautiful knife done by Chris and Elliot. Love the shape. Love the little extra bits of milling here. We did, for, for the first time ever, we did this scallop backspace that fits so perfectly. I don't know how Elliot does his renders so well consistently, but this thing turned out beautifully. And the action of this is so, like, try, just try the oh, action. You, oh, absolutely. You can middle figure flick this thing. The actual flipper is perfect. Everything feels so dialed in on this one. Guys, this is actually really, it's really so good, good in hand. And I want to show you that backspacer. It's flush, and then it kind of flares out right there. Just that, a that's a rump. Bit. Yeah, just enough. It's so cool. It's just the small details of this knife really bring it together, and it's just, it's quintessential Fair and Forge design. This but, is fun. What is it? That actually was supposed to add a slight acoustic quality to the knife you don't get from most flippers. Um, I don't know if Elliot would just mess with me or not, but he is right. It does have a little ting to it that is yeah. very satisfying. It really is. There, there's something a little fidgety about this one that is a little different than most knives, but man, it it sounds good. It feels good. It opened that flick. Right? It's, it's just enough space for a middle finger flick. Oh, I tried. Oh, I tried cur, ring finger. Cur. Middle finger, though, for sure. It's good. It's <laughs> that's good. such a good So line. good. So that's the Valor designed by Farron Forge. Love it. Next, another one that we got a lot of attention at at Blade West. This is the Ahab designed by Niche Designs, or uh, Nick Rogers. Now, I don't think Nick has any current models out with other designers, but he has his own OEM model coming out soon. He has a design that he did uh, at one point for himself that was, again, really cool, just didn't quite get the traction that he was looking for, but this model really showcases what he is about. It's wide blades, thin profiles, Right. Ultra light, super light. That's what the wood scale is like. We have a micarta one that's even lighter than that one, but it's so light. If you open that thing out, it looks like a fish skeleton inside because there's so much material removed. It's insanely light with those huge thumb studs and this super wide harpoon blade. The thing is a crazy, it's, it's a crazy really slicer. Cool. And the profile is all kinds of strange. Like when it's closed, it's got this triangular shape that looks big, but it doesn't right. feel that big in the pocket. It's kind of right. like almost like a candy bar. Yeah. It's just so out there in terms of design, but when it comes down to its final use, it's just a slicer. But no, this is just so satisfying to open and just that nice, super reduced weight. Yeah. Oh I, I have one of the protos, I've been just like using this on boxes and it is just a joy to cut things out with this thing. It's, That's awesome. It's a lightsaber. Guys, super lightweight, super slim profile. The balance is super nice, especially even with that big wide blade, you know? That, that profile Classy. Thing is Classy. The wood's really cool. Look at that pocket clip. And that really tiny scallop backspace. It's just such a small spacer. It looks, it's tie, so of course we gotta do tie. We gotta like classify right. a bit of tie, but it just has something going on here. There's something about this knife that is like nothing I've ever seen before. We had to pick it up. It's really cool. Dude, the liners inside are all skeletonized. Super, Super lightweight. Up. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. So that is the Ahab, that should be coming out hopefully sometime, um, hopefully within the next few months even. Dude, the action on these. <laughs> spot on, spot on. Really All good. All right, so now for the new uh, 2022 stuff. Oh boy. I'm my excited. boy, my boy Dylan Mallory came up with something new. Don't have a name yet, because he's in there not choosing one yet, but we're working on it. <laughs> so, this is so, so slick. It's probably one of the smaller knives we've done by him so far. Front flipper, nice, I really like that. 
I, I think the word I've heard about this one is a more friendly profile, but there's a lot of blade going on here. And yeah, uh, there is. This is actually one of the few bolster locks that we have. So I'm gonna pass that to you and let you do a middle finger flick on that one, because it's, uh, it's good. Oh, oh that's good. Oh gosh, so good. That nice marble carbon fiber, that very Dude. like reduced profile, that reduced handle, but wider blade profile, it's a cutter. It's a real good cutter. It's very Dylan. It's very Dylan. Yeah. And just, there's something about this one that says EDC more than something like the Centros or the Archeo. No, this is gorgeous yeah. for EDC. I mean, you've got the carbon fiber, the milled pocket clip, the action. Guys, if you are curious about the action, it's like butter. It is. Literally. It's so amazing. Sweet. Such a fun front flipper. The front flipper, we're probably going to have to dial in a bit more. It's a little short to get that right angle, so we might make it a little higher. But right now, it works pretty good, but it just it could be a little tiny bit better. So we may dial that in a tiny bit. Also, the nice thing about it being a bolster lock and the handles being so thin, like, you know, I got tiny hands, but you don't. Right. So a lot of people are squeezing the liners when they're opening a knife that's as slim, right. and you end up having a misfire. Which is so nice, dude. The bolster lock completely uh, eliminates that. Right. Yeah. And it just adds that nice little touch of class. Like, there's something about a bolster lock that you don't see very often that adds a level of just like premiumness. Also, I love that clip. Right? Look how clean that is. Super slim, just nice and clean. It's a pen clip. It's a super clean pen clip. It's perfect. This is such a classy looking knife. And I can't even call it a small, I can't even bring myself to call it a gentleman's knife because this thing's a cutter. Oh, dear. Like, this is a work knife. This will cut as good as many other knives on the market because that blade isn't small. No, it just fits it's not. really well in the handle. It's a great user. It's a great user. I, I, I got to be honest. This one, when I first got here, I was like, I got to see that. And uh, this guy's is a winner for sure. Ooh, if you guys like a front flipper like me, super fidgetable, you can even flick this one, guys. The action on these. Incredible. So good. All right, so let's get on something. Another another wild knife. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> let's do it. Oh, Mr. Gavko has done it again. We have the Baskin. Look, I don't I don't even know how to describe that blade. I have no words for how this works. Dude, the angles. All the angles hey, It's on a there. chisel grind too. Oh man. It is a chisel grind. We're probably not going to do the chisel for the mod production. Mike was like, yeah, maybe not. Still but, fun. Oh god, That's it's, fun. it's wild. <laughs> Recurve Tonto clip point. I don't even know, but it feels great. I love the choil. It oh, really like gives yeah. you a no, nice you grip can, on there. You can really choke up on it. Yeah. All that micro milling on the scales, which you can't quite see because the black on there, just because you know we did a PB decoding on here. Right. It's a little hard to see the micro milling, but you get that little bit of texture on there. Oh yeah. Like little little scratch scratch texture. Oh yeah. No, you can feel it. And honestly, like when you really grip the knife, it's so minimal, but it's effective. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it really keeps it nice, classy lines, you know, but you still get that yeah. texture. Mike has a way of making things that look like they're super complicated, really not feel that complex in hand. This knife sits in the hand comfortably. The blade kind of in its, in its strange way makes sense. It's an aggressive <laughs> cutter. Where the, where the Tonto point is, that's a leading point where you can use that short edge as your main cutting surface following through the recurve. The recurve is rope and round objects. If you're doing packages, all you need is that like, bubble, like what, three quarter inch? Yeah, little One tip. inch of blade. Right. And you have a fair, actually I can't see fairly, a really strong tip by how oh, wide yeah. this is. Well, I mean the thickness, guys, yeah. I'm not sure how close we can get, but this right here, this thickness, that's what gives you the strength in the tip. It's chunky. It but is. But behind the edge, it's really thin. I mean, we'll have, to, we'll have to dial it in we do a V-grind, but, you know, Mike likes thin edges. He likes things to be trimmed. He likes things to cut well, because his, his knives, despite all the crazy design that goes into what he does, his knives are cutters. They're users. Oh, yeah. And he tends to keep them that way, and I think this one really did it. I think we're going to make a few small modifications to this, make it a little smaller, maybe just adjust the size of that choil a bit. But overall, this is a great addition to our line and just a nice expression of what Mike does with his knives. It's really it's very sharky. It's very sharky. Yeah, I like that. I'm, I'm also waiting for the Tiger King jokes because we're calling it because we can't call it the Baskin because that's hard to say. So it's the Baskin. It's like oh it's Baskin. something's gonna happen. Tiger King. Something's gonna happen here. Oh boy. I love it though. That is yeah, a really cool. It's one. funny that and that dude. I kind of like that chisel grind. It's cool. 
It's way cool. It's cool. You just got to be on the side because it's left-handed. But it's right. like, eh, yeah. it's fine. It's fine. But we, we'll see what Mike says. If we get enough good feedback around people like the we'll keep it. Sweet. I'm down. Honestly, I, I really appreciate that part of you guys. You guys listen to the customer. You guys try to make it as best as you can. You guys take the feedback, which is it's huge. You're doing our best. It's something that is not always the easiest when you're working with large scale right. production, but we want to try our best. Yeah. There are some things that we can change quickly. Like it's like someone says, "Hey, this knife is too heavy. It needs a milling." Okay. <laughs> okay, done. There you go. Next batch. Here you go. Right. That's a milling. Hey, the profile on this needs to be a bit more like you know, change up the grinds on this one so they fit a little better. Okay, change the angle on that machine. Grind a bit different. It's something that we can do because we work direct. Right. We're not going through anyone else. There's no middlemen. It's just right. us. Which is great. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I like that because it's straightforward. Yeah, yeah. I know. Always has been. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it goes a long way. I get to say things about stuff and be like, hey, can we change it? Like, yeah, maybe. Let me check. Yeah, sure, why not? Like, cool. Thanks, guys. You're awesome. <laughs> That's cool. All right, so got the last one of the artisan lines, so the new stuff for this year, except for the fixed bits. We'll get that to that in the end. So we have one more knife by Cerber Snipes, Chris Ortiz, who is uh, a fantastic machinist. And this one really is for the knife enthusiast that, you know, likes the more, we'll say the more recent higher end knives. We're, we gotta yeah. dial in the thumb action on this one a little bit, but the middle finger flick on this one is just, oh, it's so good. Oh, so good. <laughs> this is the Gorgon. Super classy looking. This is a work EDC. It is not small. It is meant to be a cutter. It is thin profiled with a not super thin blade. This is meant to be a user and it feels so good in hand. Just such a perfect feeling knife. Chris really has an eye for design. His ergos are always super neutral, but they really just nail that one size fits all kind of thing. And you've got that same milling texture and here, that big right? chamfer on there too. Yeah, it's real classy looking. Super slim. Yes. I missed. Detents a little stiff on this one. We're probably gonna. I don't think we need to dial that. Anything. This one's just kind of stiff. Yeah. No. This is gorgeous. So Honestly, uh, beautiful, beautiful frame lock. Mm -hmm. I like how you guys have the uh, lock insert that you can change Always. out if you need to. You know. It's a standard. Gotta have that steel. Gotta have steel on tie. For steel oh. and steel for the lockup. Steel on tie for the lock bar insert. It just right. makes the knives last longer. Yeah. Still no, a standard. Hey, everyone that says no, that's not the case. I don't believe them. Maybe a Sebenza will do it because they carbonize the edges. Great, awesome. Chris Reeve, wonderful stuff. Yeah. But not every company ha can carbonize right. the edge, especially or ca can carbonize the lock face, especially if it's something that's this thin. That insert is still the best alternative to make a knife like this work its best for the longest period of time. I like that. Well, and, and that's what you want in a knife. You buy something that you don't have to maintain. Yeah. These are durable goods. High, yeah, exactly. Like, I know you guys occasionally ask what's in the pocket. I'll say, I've been using this particular knife for as long as it's been out. I have the original full tire so Chris's other design. This thing's been through hell. I beat the heck out of this thing, sharpened it a whole bunch. The handles are scratched to oblivion, and this thing goes with me everywhere. I love it because it feels like durable goods. We make good stuff, right. I'm happy with it, but I love the profile of this one because it's so simple. Chris's designs, they have beautiful simplicity to them that are really focused on the people that love machined products. And honestly, that's really what, I mean, you guys are bringing it with that quality machine. Yeah. You know what I mean? You got and it. It's not just on one, it's on the lineup. It's because the designers we have for these have an eye for these things. We're not just paying for a piece of paper with a drawing on it. Right. This is for the people to give us the drawings, the designs, the elements, their feedback on what the designers want to see in their knives. There's a reason why this feels way different than this. This is Dylan's idea. This is Chris's, this is Mike's, this is Nick's, this is right. Chris and Elliot's. That's what we got. Our designers are our power here, and they are all really awesome people. Man, dude, right, so the designs are always awesome. I love it. So we got a few more. So we have the Arzen side, and then let's do the, let's do the fixed blades. All right. This is by my buddy, I love dearly. Can't put us in the same room together, or something's gonna explode. <laughs> Joe Flowers, <laughs> love Joe. He actually stopped by like three times, and he's like, "Oh, hey, I'm gonna stop by." <laughs> Gone now. He's like, where'd he go? Joe's awesome. Love him. Uh, the man is crazy. He's like, I'm gonna go make a boat with this knife. I'm like, okay, Joe, you do your thing. Yeah, the boat's great. I'm paddling down the Amazon right now. It's like, 
I'm what? sitting in an office and I'm already tired, man. Like, what are you doing? Anyway, so this one was at Blade West. This one is the Hyperlite. Oh, of course, I picked a smudge one. This is meant, so we have a little story behind this knife. I'll, I'll hand this to you so you can play with sure. it. Sure. So the Hyperlite was my project to Joe. I told him, hey, you are really good at making knives. You have a whole lot of knives from a lot of different companies. I know that you know your stuff about bushcrafting. I know what you know what you like in a knife. We got it. He's good. Yeah. So can you make us, because we have different capabilities than anyone you work with, can you make us a knife with a four inch blade that weighs under three ounces? Can you? And he's like, sure, why not? This thing's crazy. It's not quite there. We actually have a skeletonized version that is exactly under three ounces. Three, really? two point nine eight ounces. This one with the micarta scales is hitting a I big mean, old, a big old whopping three point two five. Guys, minimal. Yeah, minimal weight difference. This was designed for the backpacking crowd. And to be fair, one thing I kind of noticed in this industry is there's no shortage of good fixed blades, especially right. now. With all the companies doing good US made fixed blades and good overseas made fixed blades, there are plenty of excellent ones out there. But one thing that's kind of lacking are those knives that are meant for people that are backpacking. Because last time I picked up an Essie, right. um, they have some weight to them. They're great. That's I'm telling you right now. It's gorgeous, man. Yeah. Like, I love their stuff. There's, it's a lot of weight, though. But it's got weight for a reason. But not everyone is going to need that level of weight for a lot of their products. So we asked Joe to say, hey, we can do all this machining work for you to reduce the weight of that knife to make it work as ideally as possible. And that's what came out here. So the Hyperlite is as reduced as it can be without any extras with a blade shape that gives you tons of cutting power. If you oh, notice, yeah. it is a baby machete. Even, even as a little machete oh, yeah. in there. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, you can you could whip this thing if you yeah. had to. Exactly. Even Joe's little bit of craziness, that little cutout right below there. Yeah. That's actually an adjuster for a camp stove. Are you serious? Because like, okay, so cool. sure. But it makes it look like a, it makes it look like a baby machete. Yeah. And the cutting ratio. Look at the blade on this thing. There's oh so much gosh. cutting power to it. Are you kidding me? That's like the first thing you put this in your hand, and that's a lot of yeah. blade. And for how small the handle is, and, it fits and your honestly, handle. look at that. Like, it's perfect. That's a that's full even full your, purchase. Guys. Even your beetle, even in your big old meat hooks, like yeah, if it's perfect. Right. We are gonna bring that choil in a little tiny bit, so that front choil, we're gonna just bring it down like I think one or two millimeters, just to okay. like just make it give it a bit more purchase. Right. That'll actually make the lightweight, so the the skeletonized version, a little bit easier to grip. But it is almost as perfect as one can get for a fixed blade, in my opinion. If you're looking for a minimized fixed blade that gives you a lot of cutting power without a lot of weight, I can't think of anything better than this. Guys, this is this is kind of the total package, and like you said, we're counting ounces here, yeah. right? And uh, for backpackers, mm -hmm. I mean, even even if you're gonna go out and practice bushcrafting, yeah. you don't want to have to carry all that weight. Exactly. You know what I mean? This could almost double as a backup knife for the weight of this. I have seen there are enough. Like I'm thinking some other models out there from some other American companies. There are knives that have two-inch blades that weigh more than this. Oh, easy. Yeah, easily. And I'm like, seriously, there's little like short knives that are like this thick. It's like, this thing weighs about four ounces. Why, what are you carrying this for? Right. This thing you can prep a whole meal with. This could, it's a lot of belly. Yeah. A lot of belly, super slicey. Dude, Yeah. Also, this is a winner. Also like one great that. thing, we did our RPM 9 seal this one. So for CGRB, this one, hopefully we'll be coming in under $100. With RPM 9, Joe was able to take this out and just treat, just, just wreck the thing. No rust, minimal damage, minimal, almost no chipping, easy to sharpen, easy to maintain. We've been really happy with the overall performance of RPM 9 over the last few years, especially as we've been getting more people into the steel, getting more feedback. We're getting a lot of positive results from people that go out and beat on their knives more than sit there and like, you know, cut boxes to test how long the edge lasts. Right. Like, yeah, of course, Max Bet's gonna last longer than, than RPM right. 9, of course. But Joe went out and made a boat with this thing. He cut, he was like <laughs> hacking trees apart. I like, love that, by yeah, the way, that's he's, he's, awesome. He used this for an entire trip to South America. And he did, he was like, this is great. And like, Joe, how are you doing this? Like, don't, don't you have like a chainsaw or something? He's right. like, oh, I just have a knife. <laughs> okay, man, cool. But that he, be, he beat awesome. the heck out of his and it's great. So we got one more, one more from Joe. This one we're kind of, Marketing is a more premium version because it has a bit of a pedigree behind it. Okay. This is the Reckhart, a Kephart style knife with some modern features. 
I think you want to hold this one because just the feeling in hand is, oh yeah, there you go. That one's going to fit your hand real nice. Oh my gosh. It's so good, doesn't it? It is the perfect contour from front to back, you know? Yep. It really just fills out this little, the channel in your hand, you know what I mean? It's the perfect neutral grip. It's, it, it's it, real big. It's, it's nice. real big. Some people said the handle's too long. The point is, it's the balance of it. We are going to take a little weight out from the inside of that one. We just kept this one with full stock. We're going right. to probably put a couple holes in it just to take, just to balance it out a bit. But it is a traditional cap bar, just with some changes. <laughs> It's got a swedge on top. It's got a fuller. It's got that slight. It's got that slight coffin handle again, which I really yes. like. I like coffin bowies a lot. It just has character. And when we're gonna, we're hoping to get this one out in a more premium steel. We're thinking eh, M4, 3B. I like that. Yeah, you know, we'll see. Joe doesn't like premium, which I get. If you're if you're out trying to sharpen your knives in the field, like right. You, you but right. you know what? We'll see what people like because we want to make this a premium fixed blade that really showcases what artisan can do, what materials you can work with and what a great outdoor design can be like. Dude, I love it because it's such a slim blade, but with that fuller, you get that little extra strength. But plus, dude, just just the look it's of a, that thing. It's a wide blade. That so that, really that cool. weight reduction and that bit of swedging doesn't compromise the strength of the knife to the point of like, you know, you can have this be a full flat. You can even have like a saber ground knife, which I'm right. sure is gonna be a lot more durable, but that's also gonna add a ton of weight. This yeah. is removed weight without reducing the stock too much, still gives you strength. The fuller does not reduce the strength a lot, but it again takes out more weight and it keeps the profile clean. What we do kind of want to do with this one, in the final version, we're probably going to keep it 90 degree, a 90 degree spine for fire striking, obviously. Right. This one came out because it got toppled, it doesn't have that spine. Right. You know, we'll fix that. We'll just eh, grinder, there we go. Right. Hit it with the wheel a bit, sharpen it back up a bit. But it's a, just a very striking piece for something that is so incredibly simple. Yeah. And the Kephart style knife oh, is something that gets yeah. no love. It gets no love in the bushcraft world, as far as I know, but what do I know about bushcraft when I work in an office? <laughs> right. Like woods? What woods? What's woods? We're yeah. in California. Everything's on fire. Right. <laughs> like, cool, fresh. Oh, it's gone now. But this is such a cool piece to see because there is a, that bit of history behind it. And there's this modern take on something that is so old and it works. It really does. Because as soon as you black coat that, it becomes a tactical knife. And I kind of like that too. Right? That's cool. That is cool. So good. Honestly, I like the bigger handle because, especially in a fixed blade like this size, mm -hmm. there's some guys, like I've got big hands, but see, there are some guys out there with massive. We have a guy who comes by once a year to Blade Show, maybe twice a year. He's one of our buyers. The guy used to troll ropes in New England. He was a professional trawler for years. The guy is like wow. six foot five and his hands are so big. I could do this and it would be one of his hands. It's like, so I make sure that whenever I see him, like, hey, hold this. Man. Try this. Does that feel okay? It's a little small. It's like, cool. That is that, the max. That I've never met a human alive that has hands bigger than his. And he is the, the metric we measure by. If he says it is perfect, it's as good as he's going to get. That's awesome. If he says, I can't hold this knife, it's like, all right, that means that people with your glove size are out. Right. Small percentage of the population, but hey, right. we know. If he likes it, that means it can be held by multiple people. Yeah. Really cool. So good. Man. Yeah, I've been talking so long, and I still have a whole line of knives to do. I know. All right. I'm all right. excited. So I'm going to come back to one last artist at the end. But let's move on to the CGRBs. Sounds good. So first of all, I'm going to take this middle one. This is not a proto anymore because it got released. Two days ago, yes. the More My Leah is finally out. Took us forever because we got so many orders, so many people wanted it, so we ended up making a double, a double run of them to accommodate. This is the three inch version of the My Leah. So many people like the small one. We have so many, we, we have I sold- I really like that knife. Swags is, I don't know where she goes. She's around somewhere, but we sold so many of the small ones. So many of the little baby ones because they work like the fifth pocket knife thing. Fifth pocket knives. I always thought that was like some traditional knife term. I didn't realize it's brand new. Right. Like, oh, crap. All right, cool. Now they're smaller knives. Now people are like, yeah, we want a knife that'll fit in every pocket of my pants. I just want a knife. In, just grab a knife right. everywhere. Right. I'm totally not guilty of that. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> but the nice thing about the Maya is it really showcased a knife. You could have a showcase a knife with a small handle, with a relatively small blade that did a lot of cutting, was right. affordable and just. On top of that, showcase a female designer, which is a right. rarity in this cool. industry. Yeah, Swags cool. has a good eye for design. She, you know, her line of work has put her in contact with a lot of knives. Right. She oh, knows her absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. But she wanted something that worked for her. And getting that perspective was different. Certain thing is, she needs to fit in her jeans because 
They were tiny jeans. Right. She wore it in places because she's outdoors all the time. She needs something that's accessible. It's got to right. go in the jeans, on the belt, and then she has to be able to open it multiple ways. So the thumb stud, front flipper, and with that kind of rounded back end, that wouldn't hurt. Dude, this thing flies open. It too. does. Well, because at the end of the day, when we made it a little bit bigger, this is not a big knife, but there's a lot of blade there. Right. There really That's a is. pretty chunky three-inch blade. Oh, yeah. And big that, time. And that handle being relatively small, and your hands, I'm guessing, it's still a three-finger three grip, right? Yeah. But it's a more secure three-finger grip. Oh, absolutely. Uh, this right here. Yeah. You're, that right there the locks that. It, dude, it locks that knife in your hand. Exactly. The jimping feels good. I love the color. I'm a sucker for this green, black, and gold one. We have an right. all-black one over there. We have satin. I think right now we have the green and black ones available, and we're going to be doing some other colors in the future, but we're getting them out real fast. Awesome. This color skew is so good looking. Yeah, it's cool. That, cool. It really is cool. But that one is available now, so if you guys want to get some in order, we can get some to you real fast. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we, we want in. that. We in. <laughs> All right, so that is the More Mylia, done by Ms. Sharp and Pointy Swags. Who is somewhere around the show? Well, I don't know where she went. She's, right here somewhere. She's, She's wandering. Herself. She's great. She's great. All right, so let's move on to the two new protos from CGRB. Let's go with another designer one. Probably my, one of my favorite knives for this whole show. The Ruffian designed by Dirk Pinkerton. Mr. Pinkerton always delivers. I love his designs. Oh my God, this thing feels so good <laughs> in hand. I, oh, it's such I, a great worn clip. Look at that. It's a slightly canted worn clip. Slightly. Slightly, and it's just got this very square-looking profile that, in, you know, when you look at it, it's like, oh, that doesn't look that comfortable. You pick it up, it's like, this is, it sits in the hand and grips the sides of the palm, and just everything about this is right. Honestly, guys, this one, I've played with this one probably the most. It's so good. It's such a fun blade shape with, I mean, so dude, good. are you kidding me? That just, just plain angled worn clip things a slicer and it's so thin this thing is really really exciting actually super slicey inset oh, liners man. inset liners that one's got the micarta on which i love we actually had a prototype with black micarta that i don't think we ended up having this at the yeah. show but oh man it's so good even i'm actually carrying one and first time on any crb or any artisan we've done four position clips yeah, I, know I noticed that someone in the comments is going to be raging about this. And I, I just want to laugh at them. It's like, no, there's someone <laughs> out there that wants to carry it. I, I did the dumbest thing. I'm doing tip down. I like tip down in my back pocket. Fight me. I no, love it. I, honestly, I think tip down back pocket. It works. That makes sense. It works. If I'm yeah. bending over cutting boxes, if I am crouched over. Right. If you're Pull actually like on the ground, if you're kneeling down, going through stuff on the ground, reaching to your front pocket, you're doing this thing. Yeah, all, I like back all pocket. The time. Yeah, back pocket with a small Easy. knife. It's perfect. But since we're doing this, this is our first time doing this. I know someone's going to be really unhappy about it. I know someone's going to be really happy about it. But for a functional user, this is so perfect. <laughs> it feels so good. It does. Like Dirk does some black magic with his handles. I don't know what that man does. I don't know what he knows about handles because every time he makes something, no matter how weird it looks, it feels amazing. It really does. And that, Honestly, it, and I love the geometry on it. I love that you've got those angles. you still got the soft contour. And the scales, yep. the micarta scales are contoured. They kind of they it's, slope off. It's just that, that little bit of milling there, those straight line mills. Yeah. And then just that little tiny dip in the center where there's just like a little, I don't know, we just, just like, what do we run over there to make it that just like slight dip to it? It feels... It feels fast, if that it, makes sense. It feels, oh, it, no, that totally makes yeah. sense. Especially for a slicing knife, thin, lightweight, deep carry, you know, it, it is. It's, yeah. a, it's a fast looking knife, so you know what I mean? So good, and it's small. It's a, it's a three inch knife, it's low profile. We even made a whole different type of clip for this knife. So look at the clip on this one compared to the more Mylia. This is our regular CGR clip with this oh, more right. deep indent here. This is meant to go over belts. It's kind of got more clearance. Yeah. This one, because it's kind of a smaller knife. Nice and, and slim. And in some circles, I'm sure this can be very much considered a tactical carry. This is a much more low profile clip, less ramp, meant to compress more so you don't have that snap over the lip of your pants. It really yeah. is a just compressed pull. I, like, I like it a lot. Oh yeah, I like that too. Yeah. Pocket clips that snap, mm -hmm. it's almost like it. I hate the struggle to get it yeah. out or back in. You know what I mean? Yep. The mill pocket clips, mill pocket clips have to be done well. Spring pocket clips are always a little easier. They just gotta look good. 
It's a hard spot to hit. I think we're, we're getting good with this one. The action it's on so good. these is uh, honestly like this is so fidgetable. It's so good. That is so much fun. <laughs> so cool. So Dirk, Dirk, you mad mother. <laughs> right? So good. So good. You killed it. Okay, okay. I'm gonna stop being that excited. So this next one, this next one, I feel kind of happy because I actually put a lot of input into this one. Oh, nice. Also, tons of user input. I love that. We went on Instagram, dropped the original version of this one, and there was just like, I don't know what, I don't, maybe I put it out at the right time. Maybe it just got, someone big got it, but yeah. so much info on this one. This is the Caldera. And this is, we put this out as just a, it was a, a Kirby Cleaver. And I'm like, right. cool, ours isn't another Kirby Cleaver. Boom. Yeah. Because we have a lot of those. Right. Like I said, I, honestly, we do some pretty good cleavers. Oh, We have absolutely. a lot. Yeah. And I'm looking at this going, okay, okay. We got to do something with this, guys. Come on. Like, all right. One, we need a thumb hole. We need, a, we need something you can flick on. Two, some people are saying they want skinners. We got to do a little, like, you know, I, I call this the bend grip. Right? Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the finger up grip. The finger test. Yep. We need something that's got a bit more color going on here. Because I know not everyone wants color. We make right. a, we're going to make a full black version, but come on. Right. If we're gonna do this, give it a little extra something. Give it a little something there. Give it a pivot collar. Match the color there. I love this double red version. And the backspacer there is a little something. It's just a little bit of character. And steel, because originally we were doing a tie clip. No, steel clip. Keep it affordable. Right. And honestly, that that's one thing that a lot of people don't realize that some of those clips cost so much money. Yeah, to make them, they're like $15 just to make a full tie clip. Right. It's not cheap. Steel clip for form, and if you want to upgrade to a tie clip, we're gonna make we're gonna make tie clips with this thing. I mean, come on, yeah, we're right. gonna do it. But the action on this thing, the blade, the size, that chunky handle. This is this. this is go <laughs> bigger, go home. Oh yeah, big time. Yeah. No, this is serious. Yeah. Yeah. That's a cutter. Also, that blade stock is nice and thin though. The stock, it the handle is. may be big, but it's a cutter. Super slicey. That's awesome. Flat yeah. grind, super slicey. Got to put a little bit more jimping on that guy. I think we we. Portion that for a thumb like mine, for a thumb like yours, you're probably up a little higher. I'm gonna just say include, little a few, include like another quarter inch of jimping. Yeah. But right now, this has so many things a lot of our other CGRV models haven't had. One, the opening hole, which we haven't actually done on any right? CGRV models. Which, so fun. Yeah. How that, can you not that wanna do that? That is satisfying. Right, it really is. So good. <laughs> so satisfying and just so, like this is a bold knife. Oh, it's big. Like, look at this. Look at this. Oh yeah. That the color, that little like that red, got the have red that. ring. Just man. And honestly, I'm a re I love the color red. It's so something, you man. guys got me there for sure. Yep. So that is the Caldera. That is a in-house design from CGRB. So this should be coming out fairly soon. I love it. Oh, so good. All right. So, I right, so I said one more. I have one more plus a little extra. So, big announcement. The biggest one so far. Big, big, big. Finally, finally, after about three years, the Kinetic is finally done. The actual bladed version of the Ars in Kinetic. Guys, this is huge. This is big news. It's, so been, it's been a long time coming. Been so long, but the biggest thing, I'll just close that up for you. The Kinetic is now going to be a fully American-made model. We are working with, it for this one at least, we're working with a small factory in Anaheim, California, local to us. They're right near Disneyland. Right. Really cool guys. Factory of maybe uh, four to five people who are doing some of our products. We are currently in a stage of prototyping and getting these final products out to get them done and made fully in the U.S. Everything. I like Screws, that. Screws, the bits, everything. And there's a lot of people that they, they want that. Yeah. You know? This is going to be a premium knife. They are going to run a little bit more than these guys. But this is going to be what everyone is screaming about. Buy American made. Get American stuff. Support American made. Support American designers. Right. This is going to be our venture into that world. And I, you know what? I don't know. Maybe next shot you will still be saying the exact same thing. Right. But we are starting that project now. Artisan is going to be one of the first companies. And while we are a U.S.-based company, right. we're known for Chinese-made stuff. Right. We are venturing to the world fully US made products, full CNC machining, high materials, hand finishing. We're gonna be hopefully dropping those soon and we're gonna have some of the coolest stuff so far. Guys, I'm so excited. That, that's a huge thing. Everybody is looking for American made. Uh, for you guys to start a whole yep. new 
I mean, you're taking it to the next we level. We stepped up to the plate. Yeah, finally, really so did. many years of people saying they're going to do it, they're finally going to get to it, they're going to really get on American-made stuff. We're stepping up. I got a feeling there's going to be other companies doing it because now is the best time to get on that. But if we can right. get in there early, we are getting in on it. Oh, absolutely. And I think this is a great one oh, to start with. Oh, this is going to be something else, man. So much but These fun. are out. This is just going to be the most, it's already the most wild thing out there. I'm surprised I don't have blood all over my table when I've been playing with these <laughs> right. things. My goodness. But full auto. It's, full auto. it's full such, auto a, valley. such a fun design, it's guys. It's so nuts. Also, like, I love the inset the micarta. micarta. Like, yes. Look at that, man. Plus, I love the, uh, you know, you're going with that maroon, the double purple, coral. Yeah. Double coral. I love that. It's so classy looking. Oh, man. So excited about this project. And again, hopefully I'll so be. Fun. Hopefully next time I see you, you'll be like, "Yep, this is the Arzen Peak Series lineup." I may be like, "Hey, Arzen Peak Series coming soon." But <laughs> yeah. you know, we're gonna get to it. It's gonna happen. That's we are so making awesome. this happen, guys. Huge, guys. This is huge. There's a whole lot of new going on here, and I just love how much you guys listen to the community and try to make something functional but fun and oh. cool. Oh, and now we're going to the polar opposite of that. Right. Oh, the most polarizing knife we've ever posted in our story I ever. I love this. Okay. This is so okay. fun. This is a absolute wild card. I got no name for this. This is just some, some ugly gray aluminum. This is the strangest product I have seen <laughs> since the original version of the Kinetic that my boss handed me four years ago. He's like, right. here, check this out. I'm like, is this an automatic bow song? Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? I'm like, what? Okay. <laughs> this this gave me the exact same reaction after seeing the strange things that have come out over the years. Um, so for one, this is not going to be the final version of the knife. We are going to be altering the mechanisms, changing up a bit. But this is kind of the idea: is this is a slide opening OTF. I am <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what to say, but. We are going to be doing a lot of interesting things with this one to get this mechanism dialed in. We might be changing everything, but the idea that you can just... You're nice. So fun. It's so wild. But I, It feels just like a slide. It does. It's and that's so the nice. idea. And honestly, so I'm just fun. like, can we just turn the blade over so you just do this instead? But right. right now, this... We actually got... We did it like this so we can actually ship it into the U.S. Right. <laughs> so it's not... It's actually a... It's a non double action it's it's it's, it's an auto retracting knife right now so it's legally right. ship in but yeah. here so just push the button up and gear up have some fun just make sure you pop it up properly because it really needs a bit of force there you go like that <laughs> it's, it's so satisfying <laughs> like what is this thing oh my gosh but it's so cool it's so weird it's so out there that i'm not gonna lie when i pulled when we walked up to the booth i saw it in the glass case and i was like OTF, cool. What is that? Exactly. It's an OTF. It's not any OTF anyone's ever seen right? ever. Super cool. Just bizarre, man. I just but love that you guys bring all the new fun, and you guys aren't afraid to try anything. You gotta you be a little really crazy. Are, you right? gotta be a little crazy sometimes, because we're night people. Right. We're nuts. We buy pieces of metal for way too much money. Come on. We're insane. That's, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> I'm broke, man. I'm at, I'm at the shows and I'm broke. <laughs> right? But yeah. you got to take a couple risks. I crack a couple eggs. We know people are going to be like, that's dumb. I know they're going to say that. Come on. Everyone's going to say something's dumb. Well, no not everybody gonna... likes the same thing. Exactly. But someone's going to say, that is the coolest thing I've ever seen. I want five. And there have been no short people saying that. The, the, our Instagram comments in this thing were people like, you should feel ashamed. Stop making knives. You're what? done. This company's over. And other people are like, I need this in my life. Are you kidding me? Yeah. That's crazy. It's great. I love it. Guys, this is, is this is such a fun piece. I'm excited to see the finalized oh, product. Me too. Me too. <laughs> it's going to be great. I'm saying like five inch blade, big old, yeah. cele big old bayonet. Oh man, I want to <laughs> see that. Oh my gosh, that would be awesome. Oh. Russell, seriously. Thank you so much Absolutely, for letting man. us come pop by. Tons of really fun stuff from Artisan, CJRB, and yeah. Artisan Peak Performance. Guys, yeah. this is a new thing. So make sure you guys like, subscribe, check out our playlist over here of other SHOT Show content. And man, it's been a pleasure. Been great, really appreciate it. Absolutely. All right, guys, we'll catch you on the next one.